Welcome to the Bethany Hour. We come to you under the auspices of grace from the Bethany Baptist Church, Brooklyn, New York, Dr. William Augustus Jones, pastor. Bethany is a church totally committed to a gospel of holism. We believe that Jesus Christ speaks to the totality of the human condition. We commend him to everyone as the all-sufficient Savior. We urge you to worship him each Lord's Day. Come now and unite with us as we celebrate the goodness of the Lord.
Hear now the lesson as recorded in Psalm 73, verses 1 through 17. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone, my steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain, violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness, they have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression, they speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore his people return hither, and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, How doth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily I have cleansed my heart in vain, and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long have I been plagued, and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me, until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then understood I their end. God bless the reading of his word. Let us sing the hymn of consecration for this expression of worship, number 211, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms.
psalmist declares in verses 16 and 17 of the 73rd division of the psalms these words when I thought to know this it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God then understood I their end. Why go to church? Why do you go to church? This is a sensible question for any sensitive soul. Why go to church? Why go to a place where the primary emphasis is on the unseen? Why go to church? Why engage in the worship of the invisible? Why go to church? Why gather with others to praise somebody who elects not to show up in the flesh? Why go to church? Why take valuable time to go and hear the same thing recited week after week and year after year? Why go to church? Uh, many have given answer to this question and concluded that the church is not important to their existence. And then others have sought to maintain a marginal relationship, part way in and part way out, but in the main unrelated. Uh, they belong to the company of those of whom the late Halford Luckup spoke in a little work titled Unfinished Business. He has a chapter in that book titled I Need the Church When. I need the church when I get married. I need the church when a baby is born. I need the church when a loved one dies. I need the church when I get in trouble. I need the church when. Uh, people like that are fundamentally short-sighted and selfish. They want to be served by the church but have no real desire to serve God through the church. They need the church only when the church serves and satisfies some particular need. And that's when they go to church. They go for the wedding, for the funeral, for the dedication of an infant, or when they're up against it in some serious way. Uh, the church for them is a convenience mechanism, a utilitarian entity. Uh, they have no rootage. Uh, they are not tied to its moorings. There is no tie that binds. In 
the days of my years, I have even seen some who hustled the church for their own selfish ends. I've seen people join for political purposes. I've seen them come down the aisle for economic reasons. I've even had people to join the church so that they could have a big wedding in the main sanctuary. And when the wedding is ended, their relationship to the church is ended. Uh, there are a whole lot of people, you, you'd be surprised at the numbers, who uh, view the church as an institution simply to be used and exploited. Uh, but the question still hangs before us. Uh, why go to church? Uh, and this question is addressed primarily to those of us who come with regularity. Uh, why go to church? Why? Uh, do you go to church? What is it that draws you to its precincts? Uh, what is it that keeps you coming? Uh, what is it that disturbs your spirit when you're unable to come? Why go to church? Uh, this question is particularly crucial in a world like ours where uh, suffering and corruption are so commonplace. Ours is a world where the beasts seem to outnumber the angels. It seems at times that righteousness is without reward and that wickedness really pays. Why go to church when Everything round about us seems to be falling apart and going to pot. Uh, this question really belongs to uh, faith's perennial struggle. Faith, you know, is not without certain doubts and certain problems. Uh, Samuel Miller once put it, faith is not an untroubled serenity. Uh, faith doesn't blind your eyes to hard realities. It really heightens your awareness of certain contradictions. Faith sharpens your sensitivity to pain and perplexity. It opens your eyes to the dark side of things. Plainly put, faith and fatalism can share the same space and the same spirit. Uh, obviously, this was the state of mind uh, of this writer of the 73rd Psalm. Uh, this was no person who uh, dilly-dallied in terms of his relationship to God and the temple. This was a man of profound faith. Uh, his opening testimony is to the goodness of the Lord. Uh, he says at the very outset, truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. Uh, that's a laudable opener for any soul. Truly God is good. I don't want to stand up too long anywhere without letting people know that I know that the Lord is good. It's difficult to climb any higher than that, uh, for it recognizes a divine providence that loves and sustains. But on the heels of this sterling asset, this man makes a swift descent uh, from the high place of divine acknowledgement. 
he plummets to the low place of personal despair. Uh, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. Uh, can you envision such a posture? Uh, there's a state of tug warfare between spirit and flesh, between sky and sod. Uh, caught between uh, the pull of two poles, uh, earth and eternity, he talks about God's abiding goodness in one breath and in the very next breath he talks about falling feet and slippery steps. Uh, the interesting thing about it is this. This is the way God has fixed it for the faithful. Uh, don't you remember that Jesus went directly from refreshing Jordan to the harsh and humid desert? Jesus left the dove and immediately ran into the devil. Uh, and that's the formula for the faithful. Uh, a sweet success uh, as a rule is followed by terrible trial. How many times have I experienced a high day in worship and then after being way up yonder on the mountain where uh, the rarefied uh, air is experienced with the zephyrs blowing gently on the brow, something happens that wounds my spirit and tries my soul. The psalmist was way up yonder, basking in the sunlight of God's goodness when all of a sudden something pierced his very being and he had to cry out, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. I wonder what happened. Did somebody say something that jarred and marred his happiness? That can happen, you know. Uh, there are people, uh, even in church, who don't want you to be happy and radiant in your faith. Oh yeah, the devil's got some kill joys uh, whose job it is to pull the sweet out of the sweetness. There are people in this world who delight in robbing you of your joy in the Lord. Did some kill joy put a damper on the psalmist enthusiasm? No, that wasn't what happened in this instance. Uh, he, he tells us quite pointedly what his problem was. The problem that caused his spirit to plummet. Uh, the spirit that sent him on a quick trip from heaven almost to hell. He said, my eyes got me in trouble. I permitted something I saw to disturb my faith. Uh, I was envious at the foolish, uh, at a foolish thought pattern, at a foolish concept. Uh, I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Uh, I let the view of the prosperity of evil people disturb my view of the goodness of God. Uh, my focus fouled me up. Uh, wicked men obscured my vision of a good God. Not only was my vision impaired, my soul was damaged. I became envious of the foolish. I let what I saw poison my spirit. I was envious and envy made me evil. I forgot all about God's goodness and became the devil's playmate on a field of doubt. Envy, ill will, rank jealousy, an evil heart, envy! 
overtook my spirit. Being envious of the good and the wise is awful, but I became envious of the foolish. I became envious of those who had the temerity to say there is no God. I looked on their prosperity and I became perplexed. I was at my wit's end, faith went down and doubt went up. It got so bad that I felt I was plagued by it all. I was chasing every morning. I was whipped in mind and in spirit. I spent my days in the clutches of pain because I envied the wicked. But then, bless God, the psalmist says, uh, something began to stir in my soul. Uh, something said to me, uh, fella, uh, the thing you need to do is uh, reclaim what you've lost. Uh, reach back to your roots. Uh, get on back to the old landmark. Something said to my spirit, go to church. Uh, go up to Zion. Go to the sanctuary of the Lord. Uh, do you hear this man? Uh, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. I was envious at the foolish. I was perplexed over the prosperity of the wicked. I felt plagued and chastened. And when I thought about it, it was too painful for me until, until I went to the sanctuary. I went to church. I got up. I extricated myself out of that foolish state. I got up and I went to church. And when I went to church, two things happened. First of all, my perspective was purified. Do you hear me this morning? my perspective was purified uh, when I went to church I saw clearly once again uh, I was able to see that the goodness of God is never negated by the ways of the wicked uh, I don't care how low down wicked men become they can't keep God from taking care of his own perspective was purified I, I no longer envied the foolish I began to feel sorry for the foolish uh, the prosperity of evil men didn't disturb me any longer for I understood that their reign is temporary uh, and that's what going to church does for you it opens your eyes and cleans the windows of your spirit. If you worship him in spirit and in truth, envy and jealousy cannot occupy your heart. Hate is not harbored, for love and goodwill take charge. And you don't worry about the wicked, you start singing with tinley. Harder yet may be the fight, right may often yield to might. Wickedness a while may reign, Satan's cause may seem to gain. But there's a God who rules above with hand of power and heart of love. And if I'm right, he'll fight my battle. I shall have peace someday. Why well, go to church? I go because it purifies my perspective. The psalmist said that the second thing happened when he went to church. I regained my spiritual balance. Until I went to the sanctuary, my feet were almost gone. My steps had 
well nigh slipped. Uh, I was out there in that netherland, slipping and sliding. Uh, I was all out of sorts. I was out of kelter. I was off balance. I wandered aimlessly with neither sure footing nor proper direction. Uh, I was going, but I didn't know where. I was more often wrong than right. I thought wrongly, I walked wrongly, I talked wrongly. I was awkward being, for I was not in tune with the eternal. Uh, my dust and my divinity were not synchronized. Uh, my essential oneness was fragmented. I was torn and divided. I didn't realize that my completeness resided in God. But when I got up and went to church, uh, I found out that there is no integrity apart from the infinite. Uh, so I started talking to God. Uh, and I told God, I am always with thee for you hold me by your right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory. Whom and I, who am I, whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides thee. When I went to church, I regained my spiritual balance. So why go to church? Well, simply to purify my perspective and to regain my spiritual equilibrium. I want to see clearly. How about you? I don't want to be fooled by what my eyes behold. I want perceptive power. Uh, the power to see through. The power to properly analyze. The power to rightly assess. I don't want to get bogged down in the cynical. I want to know every day and every moment of my life who's really in charge. And when you go to church, and, and when you do it because you love to do it, uh, then you start saying with Jenny Wilson, time is filled with swift transition. Lord of earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Trust in him who will not leave you. Whatsoever the years may bring, if by earthly friends forsaken, still more closely to him cling. Behold, uh, to God's unchanging hand. Hold to God's unchanging hand. You better build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Uh, and if you hold on, you can hold out. The storms may rise and Breakers may dash and skies may darken. Cynics may convene and devils may disturb. Skeptics may surround. The wicked may prosper. But if you worship him in spirit and in truth, you know something. You know for certain that evil's day is doomed. Satan is a loser. God will win. Truth will triumph. And the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. This man started out on a note of complaint. But bless God, he ended on a note of triumph. Uh, 
listen to his conclusion. It is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Oh, if you stay with him, he'll give you a testimony. He'll give you something to talk about. He'll give you something to share with somebody else. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Why go to church? I go to purify my perspective. And I go to regain my spiritual balance. Those are mighty good reasons for showing up. Don't you think so? Hallelujah. Praise God. Doors of the church are open. Anybody here who came this way apart from Christ and fellowship of his church? Is there anybody in the house? God bless, God bless, God bless, God bless. Amen. During fellowship time, I simply spoke to this mother and daughter. I've seen them coming here, and I thought the mother was a member. And I found out they were not, and I simply told them that this was a good time to come on in, and I'd like to be their pastor. Amen, amen, amen. Anybody else who's here without a sure anchor? Anybody here who's never said, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? If so, you can go down differently than when you came up. You can depart here a new creation. You can go down as a bona fide believer in Jesus Christ. And if perchance there's somebody here who lives in this city and who knows the Christ but you have no church home, you ought to be united with people of faith. God help you to come as we sing this blessed hymn of invitation, an old hymn, in the garden. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. And the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses. And he walks with me, he talks with me, he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Let us stand and sing to the glory of Christ. God help you to come. Jesus. 
you for joining us today. We pray that your vision has been heightened, your faith increased, and your soul blessed. Inquiries concerning copies of Dr. Jones' sermon may be made by calling the Office of Media Ministry, 718-919-5026. Don't forget to join us next week at the same time, and please invite others to share in this experience. His peace abide in you today and in all your tomorrows. Some of his lieutenants, no doubt, uh, cut a path through the crowd uh, for Jairus to get to Jesus. Uh, move over, step aside, get out of the way. Jairus is coming through. Jairus wants to see Jesus. And Jairus saw Jesus. Jesus considered he began to walk along with the synagogue ruler. What will the little woman do now? Uh, she has about three options. Uh, she can turn around and 
uh, head for home at once uh, to continue to witness her own demise or she can hang around for a while puzzled and perplexed uh, wondering why it is that Jairus is winner and she's loser or she can press on in pursuit of Jesus. Uh, her mind uh, got in motion and her heart warmed up. Head and heart became synchronized and she said to herself, I'm sticking with my original plan. I heard about the doctor. I came here to see the doctor. I've agonized for 12 years and I'm going to stay here a little longer. I, I want him to help me. That, that prominent man who pushed through the crowd might have the inside track, but I'm going to stay in the tracks of Jesus. I'm sticking with my plan. He's going to see a sick girl who's been living for 12 years. I'm a sick woman who's been dying for 12 years. I'm staying with my plan. Uh, this poor, pitiful, sick, dying woman, victim of a morbid flux of blood, stayed with the crowd. And my sheer determination twisted her way to Jesus of Nazareth. And when she got in touching position, uh, just close enough, she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. My God. What a word. Uh, what an explanation. What Mighty profundity. Uh, do you realize the sweeping significance uh, of this statement from the lips of this nobody? Uh, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. I don't need to talk to him. I don't have to plead with him. He doesn't have to look on me. He doesn't have to question me. He doesn't even have to hold my hand. If me but touch his clothes that will do it I'll be made whole there's not a greater expression of faith anywhere in the gospel narratives do you hear the testimony of her touch before the actual touch this woman knew something she knew that Jesus was the human embodiment of God. She knew something else too. She knew that the alleged dichotomy between the spiritual and the material was a false dichotomy. She hadn't been to any of the philosophical schools, but she knew something. She knew that the entire universe in the final analysis is spiritual and that God can manifest himself even through inanimate matter. Uh, if I can just touch his clothes, I don't have to touch the flesh. I don't have to make contact with him. If I can just touch his clothes. I shall be whole. And then with a leap of faith, she literally plunged forward. And falling to the ground, she reached out and touched the border of his garment. No flesh touching flesh, rather flesh touching the border of the Galilean's garment. And then it happened. 
that which she said would happen did happen that which she believed with all her heart would happen did happen that which had to happen happened immediately the flow of blood was dried up and her body was healed it had to happen uh, because her presence that day was itself a prayer and her perseverance uh, was a manifestation of faith and you know prayer is the key to the kingdom and faith does unlock the door uh, I believe I have some witnesses it happened because it had to happen uh, when she touched him touched his clothes uh, Jesus turned and said uh, who did it who touched my clothes and uh, the disciples always quick to respond to matters uh, they do not understand uh, said to Jesus in a kind of corrective way uh, master you see this multitude the thousands are gathered here and you raise an audacious question how can you ask who touched my clothes Jesus said somebody touched me yes sir for I perceive that virtue has gone out of me and with that word the poor woman once sick but now well came trembling fell down before the master and told him her story and he said daughter your faith has made you whole go in peace and be cured of your plague somebody touched me said Jesus somebody touched me for virtue went out of me Virtue went out of me. Virtue is a good word, but it's not quite the right word. The word in the Greek is dunamine, which means power. Uh, Jesus literally said, somebody touched me for power went out of me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and that's really what prayer and faith are all about. All right, all right. Uh, faith and prayer have to do with pulling power out of him who is the son of God and he can cure I believe I have some witnesses he can cure he can cure upon contact he can heal by virtue of a touch he's ever sensitive to our needs he can feel your presence in the crowd and he knows how to find you in the crowd. But John Greenleaf Whittier put it well. We touch him in life's throng and press and we are whole again. How important it is, my friends, in this age of mass madness and massive manipulation where all of us are demoted to digital status and seen as statistics and known by numbers how important it is that we be informed and assured that divinity is not so distant that divinity cannot be touched wherever you are in spite of the crowd Jesus is in touching distance 
we have a high priest who is touchable. I can touch him and he can touch me. And you need to know, you better know that power is available for all your needs. Some of us Christians seem to have forgotten that Jesus has not quit the healing business. He can heal whatever aileth thee. He can heal your hurt. I'm talking about your heart hurt. He can heal your broken spirit. He can heal your sickness. He can heal your disappointment. Heaven knows he can heal your sinfulness. And he knows what to do about heartache and heartbreak. I know whereof I speak because I've tried him. I've taken him, taken him at his word. He told me to cast all my cares on him. He told me that whatever I ask the Father in his name, he'd do it. I know because I've tried it. Someone to care, someone to share. All your troubles, as no other can do. He'll come down from the skies, wipe the tears from your eyes. He's your friend, and he cares for you. I know, I know, I know, because I've tried him. And I mean, I've, I've tried him with some little ones, and I've tried him with some big ones. Oh, yeah. He specializes in doing the impossible. Oh, I gave him a real big one about 26 years ago. It's been that long now. Oh, yeah. Handed him a great big one. If I had followed the counsel of the physicians instead of the leadings of the spirit, I probably wouldn't be here right now, but I tried him. I handed it over to Dr. Jones, I, Dr. Jesus. I said, Lord, I want to touch you. And I want you to touch me. I did and he did. And he fixed me. I don't like to talk about it too often because I get welled up. That's all right. uh, I get filled up and, and I want to finish this thing, but uh, oh yeah, the medic said, you crazy. You better come on in here and let us remove that lung. But I knew another doctor. Yes, sir. And I asked this human doctor, doctor, does this thing ever go away on its own? And he laughed at me. Pointed on the chart, the radiological x-ray thing. And said, see that? I belong to the Willis Sutton crowd. I go where the money is. Come on in here tomorrow. I got a bed for you. But I got in my car. And went somewhere. I don't know where I went. But wherever I was, Jesus was there. And I said, my Lord, I just started this building program and half of the block is torn down and these people out here on this faith journey with me lead them, Lord, don't let me go now. I came on home content. Calm in my spirit. My God, my God. I don't know whether he had already worked or was working then, but I didn't even bother to call the doctor. About a month later, 
I decided to go back for a tomographic study. They x-rayed me from every angle and they were mystified to say we don't see anything. Oh, praise God, praise God. And I took it by this doctor, I won't call his name, he may still be alive, and showed him the new x-rays. He said, I don't understand this. I said, well, I didn't expect you to, but doctor, uh, there was another doctor yes, yes, on the case. His name is Jesus. I understand why Lucy Campbell wrote, touch me, Lord Jesus, with thy hand of mercy. Make each throbbing heartbeat feel thy power divine. Take my will forever. I will doubt thee never. Cleanse me, dear Savior. Make me holy thine. And God be thanked that many can sing. I, uh, I look on some in this congregation today who can sing with absolute candor. He touched me. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, there's some folks right here yes, who've been touched. Yes! yes sir. He touched me. And oh, the joy yes, that filled my soul. Yes, Something happened. Something happened. Something happened. And now I know. He touched me. And made me whole. If you've ever been touched, you've got a testimony. And you ought to tell somebody. You better share it with somebody. Let somebody know that Jesus is in the healing business. That he's the doctor who knows how to deal with whatever healeth you. Yes! Touched by the power divine. And nobody can do it like Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Let's sing that for the invitation. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Doors of the church open. This is our hymn of invitation. What a friend. And that's what he is, yes, sir. friend above all others. There'll be somebody here today who wants to declare for the master, to say, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I accept him as Lord and master, and I want to serve him and follow him and honor him and obey him all the days of my life. If that's your decision, we urge you to come while we sing, and if there are persons present who live in the city and who know Jesus, but you belong to a church in some other place, if that's the case, we warmly invite you to come and unite with us here at Bethany. Hymn number 340. What a friend we have in Jesus. The doors of the church are open. Let us stand and lifted to his glory whoever you are whatever your condition the master says come come to jesus
Yes, he is. Jesus, Lord. 